let's let's debate now. Let's let's get into it. All right. Spin control. So this was brought up on debate night this past week, and I've been very eager to hear what your thoughts are on. This guy, I'm trying to think. I think his name was Lu- oh, is his name Lucas. I think his name was Lucas. Uh, smart kid. I mean, really good on the show. Glad ha- glad to have him on. But here, I ha- I ha- I disagreed with him completely. He claimed one of the reasons why Olympus at the chess.com invitational played so well was it required players to have to throw uh required players to actually have to change the spin they were putting on the disc off the T. Now my pushback on this is the only time I think that spin control, if you want to call it that comes into play is like on upshots when you're not throwing full power shots. I have never heard of anyone throw a shot, a full power shot and be like, Oh, I'm going to take some spin off or I'm going to add some spin to it. We all want to throw our full power shots with as much spin as possible. That, that is advantageous. And with spin usually becomes speed. So when you say I'm taking spin off, are you actually taking spin off? Or are you throwing it softer? Because ultimately, yes, it will spin less, but the speed is also less. And my point was, I don't think I've ever seen anyone throw a 72 mile per hour shot off the tee that has 1500 RPMs. And then the next shot go, all right, I'm going to throw 72 miles per hour, 1700 RPMs. I don't think we've seen it. We have a tech disc too. We can actually test this out and see but the idea that people are like controlling their spin, that really is only ever happening for upshots. And I still don't think people are like, oh, I'm going to try to spin this a whole lot, or I'm going to try to th- flop this one up there. I think the majority of the time, you're still trying to throw a lot of spin. Thoughts? You're right about it. I think there's one, there's one scenario where I think you can put more spin and that's in the wind. So like, (laughs) what are you doing? What are you doing physically to add more spin to the disc without increasing the speed of the disc? Um, I think, I think I do increase the spin by lagging more. And then follow through at a faster rate at the end. So like a lag pop to spin it more in the wind, like to keep it underneath something or something. I think I am spinning it more. Do you want to bet a hundred dollars and have the tech disc pulled no, out? No, it and... might it might not be, but that's what I'm thinking, right? That's <laughs> yes, what I'm thinking. Sure. That's yeah, what I'm thinking. It's a feel thing. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But ultimately I don't know I... the answer to that. But I do know that spin control mostly is dictated by the stability of your disc. Like I want my disc landing with the least amount of spin as possible almost every single time. So that's getting the most rotations out of it, the maximum amount of flight until the very end. And then when it dies, I don't want a lot of spin because if you have a lot of spin, it's going to, it's going to keep going on the ground and have different sorts of ground play. So like when I'm throwing a full distance shot, like down a, down a tight fairway, I'm taking something Hopefully that when it lands, it's ha- has thrown the max amount of flight out of the disc that my arm can put on that disc. And then at the end of it, it has less spin. Does that make sense? So like an Annie that comes down and then it's just like dead, boom, mm-hmm. lands. That's what I'm trying to do. The only, the only thing I can somewhat see someone tell me and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense is if you changed your grip. Now, Again, we, we have tech disc. We can actually test this out. And when I tested it out, to me, again, it felt like when I generated more spin with using like a power grip, right? All my fingers underneath versus a fan grip. My fan grip was still of a slower speed than my power grip. So even though my spin was higher with the power grip, so was my speed. So I think the actual relation, and again, that's why I think it matters. The relation between speed and spin that needs to change. 
So it needs to go from, you know, power grip, 72 miles per hour, 1500 RPMs to a fan grip, 72 miles per hour, 1300 RPMs. And it's like, Oh wow. Okay. If you go to a fan grip, it actually will reduce your, your spin. Right. I, and that, I don't see that happening with the numbers that I have seen uh, myself throwing. Right. So like when I'm throwing, this only happens on like probably 200 foot shots is the only time that I'll switch my grip and I only yes. do it with like a Raptor shot. So that's like, if I have a 200 foot shot that I have to like flex something and have it come in soft and skip left, I can't power grip it because I'm putting too many rotations on it, I think. And I'm still throwing it hard with a fan grip, but the rotations, it seems like it doesn't have as much because it's coming out. Yeah, it would be interesting. We now have technology that actually can show us these numbers. So, uh, you know, again, with how new disc golf is, you're going to have a lot of people on YouTube have those like clickbaity titles, like how to gain 50 feet with this one easy tip, right? How, how many rotations do you put on your like full power shots? I think I'm right around 1400. I want to say. Okay. I, 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 I mean, that sounds I, right. that seems like about the wild. average 1400 to like 16 is what I've seen. Yeah, like I think, I think Gannon was some of the highest at like 1700. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, let, uh, let us, the only other thing I was going to say with the spin thing is one of the reasons why I don't think you also see people like adjust it is because it, by that motion that we're doing, we're trying to replicate that motion as, as much as possible and adding like an extra thing to generate more spin, but also more speed that also could generate like a, you know, not being accurate. So you're better off just switching the disc, which is what pretty much everyone does is they just throw the same way just with a different disc. I think the only person, the one person that I'd like to test this out on would be Nico because he has a lot of different grips that he uses and he throws a lot of different speeds mm. with it. Yeah. Like he can throw super hard power grip, but he also down tempos really nice and can throw like fan grip fairway shots yeah. like better than, than most people can do. I don't, I don't see a lot of people even changing grips anymore. It you used know, to be a thing. You don't really necessarily have to. And I think, I think we only would see a huge difference in like how people threw if we limited how many discs you have. There's so many discs now that you can throw the same exact way, but just change the disc and it will do the job for you versus us having to manipulate how we throw the disc to make it fly.